For the past week, I've been testing this VWoods AI paper, and while the AI aspect does interest me a little bit, the Carta 1300 screen is really what I wanted to try on this prototype here. That's what's really stood out to me this past week, and I kind of want to talk through some of the advantages I think that it has versus something like a Carta 1100 or a 1200 screen that are currently the kind of dominant ones on the market. If we look at the advantages, they claim a 27% faster response time, and it's unclear if that's in relation to like the original 1000, 1100, or 1200, but I have noticed that it is decently better, and that comes into play with some of the things I'm gonna discuss here with the improved kind of response time. If you don't know, e-ink screens are not the quickest screens because they are moving physical pigment particles to the surface, and so the refresh times are typically slower. With the 1300, it seems like they've gotten it to a point that it's actually pretty good now, and it's kind of an exciting feature in my opinion. There's also a 20% improvement in contrast, and that's actually the most noticeable thing. So I will scroll here really quick. It just feels pretty smooth and pretty fast when you are scrolling. See there? a little more delay and a little that the flash that like does the refresh is a little more noticeable on an older device so if we compare it here i hope it's coming across on the camera but the actual contrast is significant in real life this is just way darker way crisper these are on kind of the marker like dark tools so this is the darkest the pigment can get on each of these Another thing that's significant and worth mentioning is that this Remarkable, for example, is a 10.3 inch screen. The Carta 1300 panels, we haven't seen any other sizes really, maybe on some small e-readers, but in the A5 size, it is 10.65. And so I've got a little demo here. I cut out a piece of paper so you can kind of see the difference. But this is a 10.3 inch and we can just compare it here let me pull up the menu so you can see but if I line it up on the corner here you can see there's a little bit extra on the side so kind of where the toolbar is and then there's maybe a, a few centimeters on top as well and so what that's going to give you is just a little more real estate it's not a crazy difference but it is noticeable and in certain apps, it's, uh, it's been nice to have that little bit of extra real estate on the screen. Also like the Kindle Scribe, for example, is 10.2. Another thing is the text just looks sharper when you're reading kind of apps or Android apps, um, web pages, whatnot. So I'm gonna go into Libby here and you can hopefully get a little example of that. I'm now in Libby and this is kind of an example of text. You can see the contrast is really good and the difference between the lights and the darks is phenomenal. It, it's, almost, it's almost like the first time I experienced e-ink on the Remarkable with like writing and stuff. This feels like really like a next kind of generational leap. And while it is subtle, it's noticeable. In the past week, I've just been really enjoying this screen and some different aspects of it that I maybe wouldn't have done things on my Remarkable because I didn't find it as enjoyable. So I really think that when we see a new A5X2, I'm thinking that it's likely going to be a Carta 1300 screen. It would be a little bit of a miss in my opinion if they went with like a 1200. And this is also 300 PPI. So compared to like the Scribe, which is a 1200, uh, I haven't seen the Go 10.3, but it will look a little sharper and crisper just because of that contrast, even though it's the same PPI. And then another thing is the typing. So when I type on the Remarkable, there's often sometimes like missed keystrokes that you get. Uh, but on the VWoods AI paper here, it just feels a little faster. It responds faster on the screen. And because of that increased responsiveness, your input feels a little bit better. And then another kind of benefit here is I think sketching. This is a sketch here that I did pretty lightly on the pencil tool, and it's just kind of the initial design, so it's not that dark from what I, I want the final product to be. But 
there's this concept in Italian kind of classical art called chiaro scuro. And what that means, it's the contrast between light and dark. And so with the V woods here, you can do light and you can do really dark. This is the, uh, I believe it's the fountain pen. Let's see, yeah, it's the fountain pen. So it allows for that, you know, separation. But when you're highlighting things, you can really like see those differences much more clearly than you can on something like the Remarkable. It's still, it's slight, but it is noticeable, right? If I wanna really get some, some highlights and some details, then it's much easier to get that and you can imprint better. I was trying to think of some maybe disadvantages that this might have, and one of them could be price. The VWoods AI paper is something that we've seen that is decently expensive unless you get it on the Kickstarter, which you're then kind of backing the company, so you get a discounted rate. But the AI5X, a Remarkable 3 when we see one, those could be significantly more expensive if they have Carta 1300. And then the reliability is still something that's yet to be seen because it is a newer device. I think these Carta 1300 screens, they've only been around for maybe the past like six to nine months, but we really haven't seen them on many devices, maybe like one or two. And so the reliability is a factor that might come into play, but given E-Ink's track record, I think we can expect that this will be, be pretty good. Like this Carta 1300 screen is a plastic kind of Mobius display. And so there's a tiny little bit of, of flex in it, but plastic screens are typically more reliable than glass where it could shatter. The only thing might be also on this like uh, indentations. I, I think I saw Khalid Rakami's review of this where when he tilted it too much because there's a little metal part there, it scratched the screen a little bit. One thing I still need to test, but I'm not really sure, but could be a potential disadvantage is maybe increased ghosting sometimes. So because you might be forming darker actual indentations in text and drawing and whatnot, it's possible that the, the ghosting, like you can probably see a tiny bit right here. I'm not 100% sure if you can see that, but um, I will do like a side-by-side -side comparison where I have similar docs and then I go through and test the ghosting to see if that's an actual issue. Also, it just so happens today that Remarkable put a teaser out and there will be a announcement tomorrow. My guess is that they're doing some form of a color version because of the green little highlight text they put there. Maybe, maybe a little, little teaser there or a, a hint, but I will uh, probably try to cover that and maybe do like a, a reaction to the, the event, but it seems maybe more likely that we'll get a color device, maybe next gen color tech. And then this Carta 1300 panel, I would expect to maybe be in the uh, RM3 when that comes out. We'll, we'll see, we don't really know what's gonna come out tomorrow. It's kind of exciting. All right, so as I'm editing this video, I think the remarkable announcement, it's unlikely to be a Galley 3 or like a Kaleido 3 screen, because I think those have a few too many compromises for what remarkable standards are but maybe it'll be some form of like a new advanced paper display. So it should be exciting to, uh, to hear what, what comes out from that tomorrow. Anyways, if you have any questions on Carta 1300 or this new AI paper, let me know. I'm gonna be putting out some content on it soon. And maybe if you have any ideas of what Remarkable's launching tomorrow, or maybe you have some opinions, leave them down below and we can, we can kind of speculate. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.